Hello, viewers. Today, let's talk about calculating ABV of rice wine. So what is the alcohol content of my rice wine, that, that my home-brewed rice wine? Um, so last episode, I tried a method that involved uh, a hydrometer and a refractometer taking measurements after fermentation is done. And I tried to calculate the ABV with that method. And um, I didn't get a value that I trusted. Uh, for whatever reason, the way I did it, the way I did it did not work. Um, I don't know why yet, but, you know, if I figure it out, I will, uh, I'll make a new video and tell you all about it. But, uh, but today, what I'm going to try is a different method, a completely different method. And we're going to try that to figure out the ABV of one of my Changchus, one of my clear rice wines. Um, we're going to try that today. So if you, uh, if you like this video, please click that like button and subscribe. I will mention that only 20% of viewing time is subscribers. The other 80% is not subscribers. So thank you subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed, while well, there's a lot of you out there, please subscribe and click the bell and you'll be notified uh, for any of my new videos. And I have a new video on the subject of rustic Asian rice wine every Thursday. So here we go calculating ABV. So the method I'm going to talk about today is uh, the spirit indication method. This is a method that involves boiling. So I read about this method on homebrewsake.com. It seems reasonable. It seems like I should be able to do this. Um, and um, hopefully we get a, an ABV measurement out of this. So let's review the brewing process of rice wine. So we start off with rice and water and some other things like enzymes and yeast. So we start off with all starch, no sugar. The action of the enzymes cause saccharification, conversion of the rice into sugar, and the yeast converts the sugar into alcohol. In the end, we have a solution that consists mostly of water, alcohol, and sugar. And what we want to do is figure out how much alcohol is present at the end. So here's the spirit indication method. We have this solution of sugar, alcohol, and water, and some other substances that we're going to ignore. We measure the specific gravity, the density, at this point. And that's our specific gravity number one. Then we gently boil off about half the volume. And that's going to boil off all the alcohol. So the alcohol boils off first. I'm just doing this in the kitchen. So a lot of the water is going to boil off too. So the result is that all the alcohol and some of the water boils off. And we're just left with sugar and water. Then what we do is we add water to return this sample back to the original volume. So the effect is that we've replaced all the alcohol in the sample with water. Then we measure the specific gravity again. So um, that's our specific gravity number two. And the difference between number one and number two is the alcohol. And the alcohol has uh, a lower density than water so that's, uh, that difference in density is going to tell us how much alcohol is in the solution. So there's a formula for that to determine the ABV. So that's the spirit indication method. Two measurements of specific gravity, uh, one before boiling and one after boiling. That's what we're going to try now. now. We do have the same restrictions as last time. There's no carbonation allowed. There's no solids allowed, so we can't measure Makli, but we can try to measure Changju. Now, comparing this method with last week's method, this method is destructive because it's boiled and you end up with something with no alcohol. So you have to be willing to sacrifice your sample. 
So here's the Changchu I want to measure. This is my brew 82A. I'm going to pour 120 milliliters into the tube here. Um, I've marked that 120 milliliters on the tube. So to me, this, uh, this Changchu tastes uh, pretty strong. I'm expecting to be able to measure it. So I'm using this hydrometer to measure the specific gravity that measures the relative density to water. The measurement is, I get a 1.020. So that's my pre-boiling specific gravity. Specific gravity number one is 1.020. I'm gonna pour the Changju into this measuring cup, which I hope I can boil. I don't want to lose any drops because I need to preserve the volume. So the first thing I try to do is to boil it um, in a bath of boiling water. Um, so, because I don't want to expose the, the measuring cup directly to the heat. So I try, so I try this first. Um, the problem is I can have the water boiling in the pot, but the, uh, the Changju in the measuring cup is not going to boil along with it. So this just doesn't work. Uh, what I need to do is to really boil the Changju by itself in the pot. Okay, so I'm gonna boil it directly in the pot. That seems like the only thing that's going to work for me. I don't have the right equipment at home, but I do wanna make sure I don't leave a single drop in the cup. Um, so in the pot, it's easy to boil the Changju. It comes to a boil very quickly and I let it evaporate for a few minutes um, to reduce the volume by approximately a half. Now it actually doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be exactly a half. The important thing is that all the alcohol is boiled off along with some of the water. I'm pretty sure that's down by a half now. I'm going to uh, pour that back in the measuring cup. I wanna make sure I get all the residue out too. Anything, I don't want any sugar to be stuck to the, to the pot. So I pour in some of the water. Remember, I, I need to dilute it. I'm gonna dilute it with distilled water back to its original volume. I pour in some amount of water to rinse off the pot. That's, that's distilled water. And uh, that way I, I can be sure to get all the residue. So I'm not missing anything that's stuck to the pot. So I pour that into the tube and I want to pour, so I've already added some distilled water. I'm gonna add a little more distilled water until it gets up exactly to that line that I marked, which was 120 milliliters. So I'm being careful to uh, add it drop by drop so I get exactly the same volume that I started out with. So now all the alcohol that was originally in this sample it's replaced with water. And if I measure the specific gravity, it now should be more dense than it was before. So it is important to keep track, of, for accuracy of the hydrometer, it is important to keep track of the temperature. Since I just boiled it and added some water, it's, uh, it's a bit hot right now and foamy. It's hard to read. I'm gonna let it cool down and, uh, and take the reading later. So this is, this is the reading I'm gonna use. It's cooled down to room temperature 19 degrees Celsius. 
And the hydrometer reading I'm seeing here is 1.042. Okay, so that's my specific gravity number two, 1.042, the post-boiling and dilution measurement. So then I just plug in the numbers into the calculator here, which also uh, required the temperatures. The initial temperature was lower because uh, that sample was from the was from the fridge and hadn't warmed up completely. The final reading I took is at room temperature. Okay, and the result I get from this is 18.4. Um, now that's almost reasonable. That still seems a bit high for a, uh, and uh, something I mentioned in last episode, this 18.4 is the volume percentage, um, not exactly the ABV, because it's off by maybe half a percent, but uh, you'll see that it doesn't really matter that it's off by half a percent because uh, this is a very sensitive calculation. For example, what if my, uh, my hydrometer reading, what if I change that by the minimum amount? What if I, what if for two, what if it was for zero? That changes it by 2%. I change from 4.2 to 4.4, I get 20.4%, so an additional 2%. So this is very sensitive to the hydrometer readings. And my, uh, the precision of the hydrometer is only 0 0.002, so it's easy for me to be off by 0 0.002. Um, and if I was off on both my initial and final readings, that would change the alcohol percentage by 4%. So that's that's a very wide range. I'm pretty sure the actual ABV lies within this range. So in that sense, this method is a success. And if I was very careful with temperature and measurement, maybe I could get within 0 0.001, but that's still a 1% error in the ABV. So even if I'm exceptionally accurate in my hydrometer measurements and temperature measurements, I still end up only accurate to within 1% of ABV. Um, so I don't think that's, I don't think that's that great. Uh, just for example, I think that experienced wine tasters could taste 1% alcohol content difference, at least, uh, Anecdotally, that's what I've heard. So, um, so this method, although it seemed to give a, a reasonable, I got a reasonable result from the formula, I don't think it's particularly accurate. It's gonna be hard for me to compare these results, one brew to another. Just, uh, I think I'm going to be able to tell by taste better than by, by these measurements. Um, and of course, maybe, Maybe uh, maybe you have a better hydrometer. Maybe you have a, a, a better procedure for uh, getting accurate measurements. Maybe you can get something more precise. But uh, the way the way I did it that I showed you in this video that's the that's my simple way of doing it. Um, it's not it's not accurate enough. Uh, I don't think I can do this on a regular basis. I think I have to stick to just drinking it and estimating it on taste. So uh, again, if I find out any additional information, I'll make a new video and share that information with you. But for now, this is what I know. Thank you for watching.